Hello everyone and welcome to this special presentation on the Australian Federal Budget for 2023. Just thought I'd, uh, came out last night so I thought I'd put a quick uh, presentation together just to get the important things for mainly for small business owners um, but yeah just want to know what was happening. Just quickly make sure you get your own independent advice before you go and do anything too crazy. That's me, I'm Derek Nolan, I'm the owner of 12 Chartered Accountants, been doing all these videos for a long time now for, for small business owners, so go and check out the other ones. So a few things that we talked about last night. Now, to be honest, last night's budget was more about what wasn't in there than what was in there. But I just thought I'd go through some of the key things that will sort of affect people who are running their own business and um, all those sorts of things. So the first thing was the Medicare levies have slightly changed. Um, some people don't even realize there is a Medicare threshold. So you have the, the Medicare threshold, which is the 2% um, of your income. So at the moment, the single threshold has been increased from $23,000 $365 to 24,276. So even though the, the, the tax threshold is $8,200, the, you don't start paying Medicare until you actually hit $24,000. Uh, for a family, uh, so this is one of the few times when your tax return is assessed where it makes a difference whether you've got a, a spouse or not because you're assessed as a, as a family then. And the threshold is now 40,939 on your combined income. And there's also um, pensioners and um, you know, senior people uh, get uh, a, a higher threshold of $38,000 roughly before they start paying any um, Medicare. And that's also increased um, for uh, pensioners or in a family. And also for every dependent child that you have, it increases by um, a further $3,760. So again, if you didn't know those things, you don't care about it, well, that's not too much to worry about. The main thing was that the personal income tax, the phase three tax cuts that were promised five years ago, this stage three, are unchanged. And really, if they were ever going to change, they would have changed it last night, but they didn't. So just as a recap, that's what the current 2022-23 tax rates are for a personal individual tax return. And for 2023-24, they're pretty much, well, they are unchanged. The big changes happen in the 24-25 years. So for the 1st of July 2024, the main changes happen after $45,000. So as you can see, the, the tax-free threshold of $18,200 is unchanged. The 19% tax rate up to $45,000 is unchanged. The big difference then is that once your income goes over $45,000, you're only paying 30% tax not the 32 and a half percent. Now that threshold goes all the way to $200,000, only paying tax at 30%. So it gets rid of that entire middle one of 37%, and it pushes up the, the start of the 45%, which is the highest marginal tax rate, from $180,000 up to $200,000. So that's pretty exciting, particularly um, for people who have been you know, kicking the can down the road regarding trust distributions and paying dividends out of companies and things like that is because that 30% tax bracket is a very broad tax bracket now and it's not a lot different to what the company tax rates are. Obviously small businesses company tax rates are 25% and a lot of the other you know, larger companies are 30%. So it's not a lot of difference now between the, the personal tax rates and the company tax rates. So the good thing is they are in play and they're going to be coming in the next year or so. So basically for someone who's on $200,000 a year as a salary or at any income actually, capital gains tax, um, investment income, rental income, if your income is $200,000 a year, the savings is nearly $10,000, actually $9,275 tax savings per year, which is pretty good. The other thing was that wasn't in the budget was the loss carry back has now finished. So for the 2022-23 year, this is the final year. So for those who don't even know what it is, during COVID, it was always an issue that, well, before COVID, if you had a loss in the company, that was fine. It could be carried forward and be offset against your future profits. No dramas. The problem was when you had 
a, a, a profit followed by a loss. The tax office didn't allow you to go back in time. That loss is fine, it can be carried forward to future profits. But what they did in the COVID period, so for 2019, 20, 21, 22, and 23, if you made a loss following a profit year or a profit year in a previous year, since 2019, you actually can go back and cash that loss in and get cash for it. The tax office actually basically pay you for your tax loss. So we were hoping that was going to be extended for another year, but it hasn't. So here we are on the 10th of May 2023. Pretty much it's going to finish in the next month and a half. So we won't be able to do that anymore. So if you have a loss in the 2023 year, and you made a profit in the 22 or the 21 or the 20 or the 19, that's okay, you can still cash that one in. But this is the last year you'll be able to do that. The other thing that wasn't extended was the temporary full expensing. There was a thing before COVID be that was called the, um, the instant asset write-off. And everyone sort of became familiar with that. It was a $20,000 instant asset write-off where if you bought an, an asset, an individual asset, it was worth less than $20,000, you could claim it as a deduction. Then just before COVID, they bumped up to $30,000, which is even better. But during COVID, they bumped up to $150,000 and then got rid of it completely and replaced it with this thing called a temporary full expensing, which is pretty much unlimited. Any asset you could purchase. And the other thing about the full expensing was if you had an asset that you bought before the instant asset write-offs came along, and you've been depreciated over time, you can write that off as well. Now, that's finishing. For the 30th of June, 2023, that is finishing. So if you wanna go and buy something more, you know, fairly expensive and write it off this year, we have to go and do it in the next few weeks. However, what's happening from the 1st of July, 2023, they're replacing it with what they call the refreshed. I don't know what's refreshing about it. The small business instant asset write-off is back. So the instant asset write-off is, again, same sort of rules, is that your turnover needs to be less than $10 million. So under the temporary full expense, because your turnover had to be less than $5 billion, which is like pretty much everyone. But the instant asset write-off is back to the $10 million turnover, and it goes back to the original $20,000 cost that you can write off, not the $30,000. And it has to be installed and ready for use between the 1st of July 23 and June 24. So it's only a one year extension. It's not something that's going to be with us for much longer. I thought this incident asset rifle was going to be around for, for years and years to come, but no, it doesn't look like. So 2023 is the end of the temporary full expensing and 2024 looks like it's going to be the end of the instant asset write off at $20,000. And just a reminder, the $20,000 is per asset. It's not like the total amount you can write off. Uh, a couple of important things though, is if you're registered for GST, it's $20,000 after GST. So if you go and buy, say for $22,000, you claim the $2,000 uh, back from GST, so the net is 20,000, you can write that off. But if you're not registered for GST, if you're a small business um, under $75,000 turnover, it's the $20,000 has to be including GST, that's all. Just to make that clear, because someone's asked me a few times about that one. A couple of other little things that was in the budget was this small business energy in incentive. Um, and again, the government, being a Labor government, is getting very excited about um, net zero carbon emissions and all those other things like that. So they're trying to incentivize people to move to electrifying things, electric cars, electric things. Um, and that's what I think. If you need to incentivize people to do this, uh, might not be as great as people first think. You should be able to do it. You know, a business should do this for its own profit motive and things like that. But anyhow, so if you're a small business with an aggregate turnover less than $50 million, you get an additional 20% deduction for any asset you purchase that supports electrification or more efficient use of energy. Um, up to $100,000 in total. So it's not $100,000 per item, but $100,000 in total. So a couple of examples I've thought of there is if you have like a diesel um, forklift and you go and buy an electric forklift, 
for $5,000. So under the instant asset write-off or under the um, full expensing, that $5,000 will be a deduction, but you'll actually get a $6,000 deduction because you get that extra 20%. That's what we're talking about here. Or if you're putting in new lights in your office that is energy efficient, LED lights or something like that, instead of getting you know, a deduction of 100% for it, you'll get 120%. So they're the sort of things that they're sort of doing. Uh, one other thing, a couple of things in the, in the budget was they are increasing the period of time that you can amend your company tax returns. Not very exciting, but from 1st July 2025. So at the moment, individuals, you only have two years to amend your tax returns where companies also only have two years in most situations, only have two years to go and revise their tax return. What the tax office is saying, well, actually from the 2025 years, that's another year away, you actually have four years. Uh, don't know why that's exciting, but um, I just thought it was. And um, there's a couple of things there, they're not gonna be sending out checks anymore, not that we ever see too many of those. Uh, another thing here, the ATO is offering an amnesty for small businesses that, who have fallen behind their lodgements. This is BASs, tax returns and things like that. So the ATO will, will not apply failure to lodge penalties for small businesses with an annual turnover less than $10 million. The amnesty is limited to penalties that would otherwise apply to outstanding tax statements that you lodge from the 1st of June, 1st of June 2023, so in a week or so's time, to the end of this calendar year, so the 31st December 23. So if you lodge tax returns, BASs in this period of time, which were originally supposed to be due between the 1st of December 2019, so just before COVID, to the 29th of February 2022, so if you're still got things that you haven't lodged for that period of time, and, and, and you know who you are, there's a few people out there. If you lodge them now, the tax law says, listen, we won't penalize you for anything. Uh, but it's, it's from the 29th of February 22, those things are, will still be penalized. So yeah, I don't know, they should, be, they should be helping businesses and not penalizing them as much as they do. So basically it's sort of that, that whole COVID period, they're trying to get people to uh, get everything lodged. This one's been in the news a little bit for people who with superannuation balances above $3 million. The earnings on those superannuation balances for those individuals will be taxed at 30%, not the regular 15% from the 2025-26 year. So, so most superannuation funds when they earn income, if they're in accumulation phase, will be taxed at 15%. So for the 1st of July 25, you've got $3 million in your superannuation, you'll be taxed at 30%. And that uh, additional 15% is gonna be taxed, will be taxing unrealized gains. So again, if you've got more than $3 million in your superannuation fund, you should be a bit upset about this one. It's a, it's a bit rough, this one. Uh, last thing was this Small Business Technology Investment Boost. So this one was announced um, in the 2022 budget. So this is when small businesses go and incur expenditure on digital operations or digitalizing their business or portable devices or cybersecurity, basically anything electronic and computer related, they're going to give you an additional 20% deduction. So if you want to spend $100, they'll give you a $120 deduction. Now this was only announced and was uh, available from the 29th of March 2022. And it's going to be, it's only not going to be extended past 30th of June 23. So it's still a bit of time. The funny thing with this one though, even though you could claim things in the 2022 tax return, so for a quarter of the year, you couldn't actually claim your tax return. The tax law says, well, no, no, you actually have to remember what that was and claim that extra 20% in the 2023 tax return. So again, we haven't got our software, but when we do, there should be a little box in there where we can sort of go back and look at what our expenses were in that year and then try and bring it forward. 
Uh, the same thing with this small business skills and training boost, exactly the same thing. Your turnover is less than $50 million. You get this extra 20% of your expenditure um, if you go and get external training courses done to improve your skills and things like that. Um, not sure how that will actually work, but same thing as from the 29th of March, 2022. Now this one was extended until June, 2024. So there you go, they brought, brought two in last year. Now the funny thing about these things, both those boosts are yet to be passed into law. They better hurry up and do it because there'll be people wanting to claim these de extra deductions from the 2022 year and the 23 year in the 23 tax return. So if you've got, if you're going to be spending some money on um, some electronic devices and things like that, you'll be claiming under the full expensing or uh, anyhow, but you'll be able to claim that extra, now that finishes in a few weeks time. So make sure you go and do those things. But whatever you spend in the 2022 year from the 29th of March onwards, make sure you remember to tell your accountant to claim those in the 2023 year. So hopefully they will become law before we start doing the 2023 tax returns. All right, that was my brief uh, outline on the, the, the budget last night. It was pretty unexciting for us uh, accountants to look for small business things. Uh, there was nothing on um, small business capital gains, tax concessions or anything like that. So anyhow, if you uh, go and check out my website, www.12.com.au, there's some other things regarding small businesses and other budgets and other years and things like that. So hopefully you get something out of all that. So, all right, thanks for watching and goodbye for now.